All right, now the Department of Science and Technology has for years been celebrating everything science, everything technology, everything innovation through their annual National Science Week. And uh, this week, I mean, this year, obviously we're coming to you from the Nelson Mandela University in Port Elizabeth at the Mission Vale campus. And uh, joining me this morning is the Minister of Science and Technology, Nalendi Pardo. A very good morning to you, Minister. Thank you so much uh, and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Simpio, and thank you very much. Morning to all your viewers as well. Indeed. Now, we're talking to you from the newly renamed Nelson Mandela University. What does this uh, renaming signify? Well, I think it's a great move uh, by the university and particularly its council to have the name of uh, Mr. Mandela being the primary identifier of this wonderful uh, institution. And they're the most fortunate to be the only one in the world uh, to have this name attached to their university. Indeed, indeed, so I quite agree with you. Now, the, uh, this institution, the National Mandela University, will also launch the Oceans, uh, the Oceans Campus. So how does this align with the government's priorities, such as the Oceans Economy or Operation Pakisa? Well, we've been working uh, extremely well with uh, Nelson Mandela University in the Oceans Economy Research and Innovation component. They've been a leading institution in marine sciences research, as well as in responding uh, to the various research areas in aquaculture uh, that we would like to focus upon as part of our oceans economy uh, contribution. So really, as a coastal university and with a very strong marine sciences interest, they've been an excellent institution for us to align with um, and work with in, in the ocean research domain. Now, this event, the National Science Week, has been earmarked, you know, to spread the excitement around science and technology. Has this been yielding any fruits? Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the key uh, imperative is to attract young people and especially schools, teachers, uh, to emphasize uh, science through having had the exposure uh, that National Science Week provides to them. The launch takes place here at the university. We do this uh, by rotation in uh, the various provinces of the country. But what's wonderful is National Science Week is a week in which the nation should focus on science, technology and innovation. We have 80 centers throughout the country where there are lectures held in town halls, uh, university researchers speaking to the community, addressing schools, addressing students, addressing teachers, our 34 science centers are part of this. So really, uh, it's a week in which everyone can get closer to science. But the key objective is to draw more and more young people in, to really intrigue them, uh, to interest them, to let them know that we run science competitions. We have what are called science Olympiads. They can enter schools or individual classes and really become part of the world science community because we've got to build this research base in our country. We have to have that competence in maths and science, and we've got to produce more and more researchers. So I always say to young people, I'm starting with you, but I want you at BSc. I want you BSc honors. I want you at master's and eventually PhD. Then I want you to remain in science as researchers and innovators. Now, in last year's event, last year's National Science Week, you did point out that astronomy uh, has become the flagship science and technology success story in democratic South Africa. Just how confident are you that this program will make a major contribution towards uh, spreading uh, awareness throughout the continent and throughout all the communities to embrace science and technology as a, as a, live, as a livelihood? Well, I think uh, astronomy sciences has already had a major impact. And of course, our researchers are among the most productive uh, in the astronomy research community. So already we're doing very, very well. But, uh, you know, the real, real big story is the square kilometer array being located in South Africa and other uh, African countries. So the square kilometer array, that radio telescope and the contribution South Africa is making to it is the big science story of Africa. And can you imagine that for the first time, Africa will host a global scientific infrastructure of this immensity and have the world come to South Africa 
and our eight African partner countries to do their research. It's a different story about Africa. Africa as a science destination. This is just, I think, incredible and proves again that we were correct to focus on astronomy sciences as a key research area among many others, but as a key research focus uh, for South Africa. And we're extremely excited that just in three weeks, we'll be heading to Ghana, which is one of the SKA partner countries to unveil the radio astronomy facility that we've jointly built with Ghana as part of the contribution to the African very long baseline uh, network of radio telescopes. So Africa's story is astronomy sciences, is physics, is engineering, and South Africa is making an incredible contribution to the development of science and innovation on the African continent. And indeed, Minister, now you will agree with me that uh, for that to happen, for that to be a success story, uh, there has to be political will from the government. But then can you see the political will from the part of the government? Because, uh, I mean, we've, we haven't seen an increase in budgetary allocations to the department and so many township schools are incredibly under-resourced. Can you, is it safe to say that there's absolutely no political will from the part of government? Oh, no, I think that would be really wrong. I mean, since 1994, We've had the most amazing advances in education in democratic South Africa than in any other era uh, in our country. So it would be wrong uh, to say that there isn't political will. I think the focus on education as a priority for our country has been an important one. And of course, we continue to unveil over 40 schools a month in the country, which are new schools with all the facilities that schools need. But we've not yet got to the proportion of the budget that should be devoted to science and technology. And that is something we have to address. But of course, we have to restore investor confidence. We've got to grow our economy. We have to increase national revenue in order to be able to improve the budget of science and technology and all other uh, public uh, uh, Let's talk briefly about the dropping of uh, maths and science pass rate. How does that affect uh, your department in terms of getting more scientists and getting more people to take up sciences as a, as a major? Well, my understanding is that uh, what has been agreed on is that you will not be held back if you do not achieve 50%, is my understanding, because what is happening is children passing all other subjects and then not passing maths at that level and then being held back in class because of it. So there's a shift, but there's no way in which we diminish our interest in succeeding in mathematics. Minister, unfortunately, we have to end it there, but then thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it.